so uh, just to introduce myself, um, I see we've had a kind of a post lunch attrition. Um, I'm director of EMEA for infrastructure maintenance. Um, I've got to thank Platform Markets for inviting infrastructure maintenance to this uh, great event. Um, I've been very impressed uh, with all the speakers so far. Um, even more impressed uh, with the uh, chic, comfortable uh, uh, stage they've uh, set up here as well, which I think is very comfortable. Now, originally, we were meant to be doing a panel. Unfortunately, we had a couple of panel casualties. Um, so together with my good friends from over the compute, we huddled together this morning, and we kind of changed it to some mini presentations. Um, and we'll focus on the water and cooling challenges uh, in Africa. Now, just quickly, for those of you who don't know the infrastructure masons, uh, we're a professional non profit uh, organization um, and with a vision to um, unite the builders of the digital age, um, which is quite a challenge in itself. We have focus on four main pillars. Um, education, inclusion, sustainability, uh, and innovation. Um, this year we've had a real focus on Africa, and with particular focus on education, which, be, which has been mentioned a few times um, in some of the discussions today. Um, and this year, so far, we've provided over 300 scholarships in Africa, with the aim of providing 1,000 uh, by the end of the year. Um, so we've got a, a kind of a laser focus on education at the moment in Africa, uh, which is great. And really trying to improve the flow of talent uh, into our industry. So without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce our speakers. Uh, we've got uh, David uh, Vunazara, or David G, as he's known in the industry, um, and Stephen Frenzel. Uh, both from the Open Compute project, so I'll well, step up first. Thanks. Thank you, Will. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. So, more people hopefully come into our session here. No, no. No? The, main, the busy networking, which is also okay, makes it easier. So, let's um, dive into it. Start with my slide. All right, so um, this is um, the first slide I would like to share with you guys. It's about, let's say, the critical points when it comes to running data center sites, really looking back in time at the legacy data center sites, the tier three or tier four data center sites. And these are the, the main building blocks Everyone has it in its, its mind, and uh, it's a general, general bullet points here. But of course, there's also a focus on Africa, as you can see. The first one is how to run, how to run data center sites as sustainable as possible. At the same time, how you able to reduce the CO2 emissions in those data center sites. Further on, when it comes really as you've been really experiencing, and we got, I think, today in all the presentations, the IT workload, or the demand on the IT workload is really increasing. And of course, what is also increasing, and there are people need to work on, and everyone in the industry is working on, is really decreasing the TCO, the costing, on those, on those sites. So this is the balance we need to really work on. And then, this is basically a point for first and farm. I think in the previous panel discussion, he was saying, hey, we talk about Africa, and it's about really water consumption. As you all know, water is a really rare resource here within, within Africa. So, and data center sites are using a lot of water. And I will pick up this, this really important point in the later slide, because this is something everyone needs to work on. And I'm also happy now to also share with you guys how the OCP can contribute in order to really uh, working on innovations in, in, in able really running data center sites with water and reducing the amount of water which is used. And last but
for the least elderly disease, the increase in energy cost also is a big, big issue here, especially also if you look at Europe. So where we coming from, I'm coming from Germany, you know we have the highest energy cost, but then within the European Union, it's also a matter for other countries, yeah, it's also a matter here for, for Africa. So how can we really work on to really decrease here this, uh, the energy part in terms of costing, at the same time, energy is also an issue when it comes, we got also today, there are some outtakes um, where the, the grid is not really stable. Yeah? So I think especially if you look at South Africa or other countries, um, this is a big issue for the data center sites. If there is no power for one or two or even three hours or even longer, right? Yeah, okay. So now really, let's take the water consumption, which is really, I think, the, the thing we really looked into when we talk about running data center sites here in Africa. Um, looking here at these points, and looking at legacy data center sites, again, modeled in based on tier three or tier four sites, these are all designs. There's one, how can we really reduce the, yeah, um, the usage or the condensation um, of water in the chillers? And also, the water, the amount of water used in these uh, water cooling towers is also enormous, yeah? How can we reduce, and also at the same time, the actually the, the water also used to do the power generation is also enormous. So how can we really work on this? And um, and this is something I would like to share in the next slide here. And here, the last slide here I would like to share with you is about the OCP, the Open Compute Project Foundation. How can the OCP guys or the community really support or contribute in this matter? Yeah, or really working or running data center sites as sustainable as possible, reducing the um, the CO2 footprint, and at the same time also reducing the usage of water um, and also the usage of the energy. Yeah, and here this is basically um, the process, the innovation pipeline. Uh, how how really new products, new innovation are really shared or uh, developed and shared within the community. And we heard, I was really happy today, we heard I think two or three times the word OCP, uh, we heard the word, the word hyperscalers for, for uh, several times today. So how familiar are you guys with OCP? Have you guys been involved? Have you heard about it? No, but uh, of course yeah, I played with you. Okay, so um, again, it's not only hyperscale or cloud native data center, it's not only hyperscale data center, it's actually data center sites for government, data center sites for the exploitation industry, uh, for the financial sector. These all, we all these guys on other sites on open source software and also on the open source hardware. And the OCP founded or established back in 2008 and 9 a new data center ecosystem, um, the most energy efficient one worldwide. Yeah. So this is in a nutshell. And here, um, you can see how the process is really working. Um, the community, and there are different project groups called OCP subgroups, and in these groups, it's rapid power, immersion cooling, or advanced cooling. Um, the community is working together with the members um, on new innovation, new products. Um, Jointly, I think there are 250 plus members worldwide in the community and more than 6,000 developers working together in these subgroups. And if they come together, they have a product then, they jointly work together on that. They share this, it will be evaluated as you can see on the, on the second step here by the, by the community itself, uh, it's, it's themselves and at the same time then by the incubation committee. As soon as this has been run through the process, it's, it's also published on the OCP website. Everyone gets access. It's a collaborative community. So, when the, what I mean, what I mean for Africa, for example, 
you can get access to these new innovations when it comes to water consumption, when it comes to how to uh, decrease the energy consumption, and also the CO2 emissions. You can get access to these solutions, build of material, the whole program, and you will be able, if you have the knowledge, if you have the people, if you have the resources, to do actually, to do a product, and also to, to produce, distribute, and to share it, to send it on. So this is how the OCP is able to work on these areas like how to reduce the water consumption uh, when it comes to cooling. But the, the, the majority of the energy is really going into the data center side to cool the IT gear. All right, this was my part. So I would like now David to come on stage and elaborate on the on the ground solutions here what I just said in the of challenges. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you very much. Uh, but before I will start, uh, I uh, want to ask uh, uh, how many of you uh, is, uh, know about uh, liquid and how cheap for the machine? Please write your not many of you, but uh, if uh, I will ask how many of you know how to build that satellite liquid project? So, this is why, this is why OCP is a perfect way to uh, bring this knowledge to the new market, which can create how to do that, how to do that, and what benefits you will get from that. So, let me go. This is the open source design of the liquid cool modular data center. Where you have not only facility design, but also web design and server design based on open source components. It means that you can take that design, implement that in the project, give that to the contractor, give that to the producer, and that in that way you realize that project. But another thing, what benefits we will receive from that shifting, especially in uh, Africa? As we talk, uh, there is a lot of issues with water, with cooling, and with energy input. In that scheme, you see that we have 27 degrees water inlet and 58 degrees outside. The temperatures allow us to take out the chillers, take out the mechanical cooling, and heavily reduce the energy input to the gas center. Another issue is about IT load. IT load itself is go down for 7 15% because of less working the fans in the servers. So overall, we get 35% reduction in power input with the same quantity as the servers. Another good thing is that we can put much more kilowatts in one rack. In this case, we have 12 racks, each one 27 kilowatts, but with the same servers as before. And uh, especially for climate of Marrakesh, I show this example when we have 335 kilowatt installation, which is equal to 360 conventional IT law. And during all the year working in Marrakesh, the water consumption will be just 230 cubic meter per year. Actually, that is mean that we will have uh, uh, double UE water utilization efficiency factor 0 0.08, which is uh, approximately 100 times less than using evaporative cooling. And uh, at the same time, if we look for that modular data center, on 1,000 servers, which is installed in that modular data center, we will save 1.5 million euros for three years in total cost of ownership. And the uh, next uh, part, which I want to uh, explain, is about sustainability and seawater cooling. 
previous case I showed in Morocco, where we don't have access to the sea. But as we mentioned in previous uh, panels, that most of the hyperscalers and data centers located on co coast, because subsea is close uh, to the coast. And at the same time, there is a good match with seawater cooling. But it's not reliable and perfect source of the cooling. It's also it's a good way for heat reuse. So the first stage is with the Datsun cooling, our data center heat up that for higher temperatures, and during that uh, heating we can make the desalination process, we can uh, make uh, a greenhouse operation, uh, fish farming, and other uh, useful things which is uh, requested in African continent. Uh, this solutions is available on another road stream in OCP, which name is heat reuse, when, where you can take the examples of using the heat and by this achieve sustainability. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, okay, so I'd like to welcome uh, next 